And then we went on. I have heard some uh, uh, educational experts say, well, we've never defined what an education is. We've never really defined what it is. And that may be true for educators in the education schools, but we told you what it is and what it's going to be in this state, uh, God willing. And we said, for purposes of our Constitution, a sound basic education is one that will provide the student with at least one sufficient ability to read and write and speak the English language and a sufficient knowledge of fundamental math and physical science to enable the student to function in a complex and rapidly changing society. Two, sufficient fundamental knowledge of geography, history, and basic economic and political systems to enable the student to make informed choices with regard to issues that affect the student personally or affect the student's community, state, and nation. In other words, so they can exercise citizenship in a, dem in a democratic society. Three, sufficient academic and vocational skills to enable the student to successfully engage in post-secondary education or vocational training. And finally, four, sufficient academic and vocational skills to, engage the to enable the student to compete on an equal basis with others in further formal education or gainful employment in contemporary society. Boiled down with schools have got to prepare people for life is, is what, it, what it amounts to. And then we went on to say, though, looking at the other part of the thing, we are convinced that the Equal Opportunities Clause of the State Constitution does not require substantially equal funding or educational advantages in all districts. And that was a, a bone of contention within the court. But Leandro's often been referred to as an educational funding case. And we said at least three times in there, no, it's not. It's an educational achievement case. It's, it's, it, it, uh, we're not measuring input, and we said this specifically, it's output that matters. What are the kids coming out with? Now we, you know, it's no secret to any of us, you gotta have money to run schools. But we did not want to get off on the, on the chasing the notion of everybody has to have equal funding. And that would have been a very, I thought, would have been a very Brown versus the board like problem. Because in the same suit, the wealthy districts piled in and said, now we're entitled to more money too because we have to run these special education programs. Uh, we, have more, we have a lot of Hispanics we have to teach and all. So, so if we're gonna really be equal, we have to have more than equal funding. You know? That's the kind of stuff we don't need to get into. Uh, we didn't feel like we need to get into. We need to focus on the children of this state and what are they learning. And the truth is that there will always be disparities. There's going to always be some disparities uh, between the wealthy counties and the poor. If for no other reason, the parents in the wealthy counties uh, tend to be more uh, tuned to education, give it a higher priority. Uh, at the time, I was in, living in Beaufort County and teaching as the special ed teacher in the third grade. Um, I would say half the parents in that county said, well, you know, shoot, I didn't go to high school. I didn't get through high school, and I'm farming just fine here. I'm fishing just fine. That's not people. You know, they can read, you know, read and, and, and do a little ciphering. That's, you know, that's all education you need. And, and our, our board of education at that time, probably half of them hadn't graduated from high school, much less gone, gone far. There's always going to be those disparities. But what, we, what, what the Constitution requires, we said, is not equal achievement. It's not equal money. It's equal opportunity for a kid who has the native intelligence and the drive and willingness to learn and to do well in life. It's the equal opportunity to achieve uh, that is important. And then having said all that, we cautioned, I, I hear, I have heard recently about the courts taking over everything and all, all of that. 
But what we what we went on and spent a page, full page, page and a half, something like it, tell, talking about the deference we were going to give to the legislature and to the educators of the state, not just the state education, not just certainly not just Department of Public Instruction, but but the uh, the local educators, and we said. Uh, we reemphasize our recognition of the fact that the administration of public schools of the state is best left to the legislative and executive branches of government. That's the legislature and the governor and the uh, state superintendent. Therefore, the courts of the state must grant every reasonable deference to the legislative and executive branches when considering whether they have established and are administering a system that provides a sound basic education. In other words, courts aren't going to substitute their educational judgments or, or you know, how the high school should be structured. Courts are to focus on, again, what's the output? What are the kids learning? We went on to say, but like other branches of government, the judicial branch has its duty under the Constitution. If on remand of this case, and we were sending the case back, we didn't decide whether uh, the schools were or were not, uh, and whether the state was or was not offering a sound basic education. But we sent it back to the judge and said, now we've given you this, these guidelines of what a sound basic education looks like. Uh, see if you can figure out whether we're, whether we're getting one or not. And we went through some of the things a judge should look at. One, of course, was test scores. How are the kids performing? And, and we said, we're not limiting this. You can look at money, but we caution it is not a deciding factor. And look at whatever other things uh, it, it appears to you are uh, indicative of whether well, kids are getting an education. Then we said, um, went on to say that, uh, that uh, if on remand the court uh, makes findings and conclusions from competent evidence to the effect that the defendants in this case, as the state, uh, state officials, are denying children of the state a sound basic education, a denial of a fundamental right will have been established. It will then become incumbent on the defendants. The burden of proof then shifts. It will then become incumbent on the defendant state uh, actors that their actions denying this fundamental to show their actions denying this right are quotes necessary to promote some compelling governmental issue interest and then if it said if the defendants are able to do are unable to do so it will then be the duty of the court to enter a judgment granting declaratory relief in other words declaring them out of compliance and such other relief as is needed to correct the wrong while minimizing, again we come back to this, we give endeavors, while minimizing the encroachment on the other branches of government. And that was as far as we could go at that point. <clears throat> and as Chief Justice, <coughs> excuse me, it was my duty to assign judges. In this state, judges rotate. We're one of the only states maybe the only state that really does that now. And, uh, you won't get if you, different motions and so on in a case you, want, you, might, you don't know who your judge is going to be, and it won't be the same one in all probability who ruled on the last motion. But for special cases, we, uh, the Chief Justice can pick a judge and assign them and say this, everything in this case goes before this judge. Well, I knew, as I said to begin with, that it was that this was going to be a long road, and that it would take somebody with some guts and gumption and intelligence to handle it. So I ran into my old friend from <laughs> high school, I mean from, from law school, Judge Howard Manning, and I said, I have something, I have a little job I think you'll just love. <laughs> And, uh, and I was thinking about his father at the time. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll close with a story about him. And I think it speaks pretty well to Howard Manning Sr.'s um, tenacity and Howard Jr.'s as well, and, and willingness to speak their mind. But I told him, I said, this case may take the rest of your judicial career. 
it, it, it reminds me of Brown against the board. And I'd worked with, with, as I said, with his father on trying to sort that all out, all that integration, uh, desegregation stuff for North Carolina.